Hello everyone, this is Priyanka. Welcome to my channel Priyanka's IT School. Today I am sharing next tutorial on software testing. In previous tutorial, I have explained testing types, testing levels and change based testing type that is retesting and regression testing. Now in this today's session, let's understand concept of black box testing and it's all technique okay which we can also refer as test case design testing technique okay so in this video i'm going to explain what is ecp equivalence class partitioning so let's say the basic agenda for today's session what is black box testing then when to start black box testing who can do black box testing black box testing test case design testing techniques and ECP with some ISTQB questions. So very first, what is meant by black box testing? In software testing, there are two techniques. First one is black box testing technique and another one is white box testing technique. What is black box? Black box is a process where we can provide input to the system and we can check output from the system without bothering into finer detail that is we need to ignore the coding part tester is responsible just to provide an input and just to test the output from that software application right this process is called black box testing black box testing is based on the customer requirement in black box testing software is validate against customer requirement so based on requirement black box in this black box testing, tester can perform functional testing, non-functional testing and you know some regression test cases also we can simply perform in this black box testing process. Now based on the software up upgrade, we can do regression testing. In black box testing, tester is responsible to write a test cases as per the client requirement and identify defect from the software application. So main intention is we need to test we need to write a test cases to test the software application and we need to identify defect from that application by just providing input and by just checking output from the software system now guys if there is a question when we can start black box testing then yes black box testing we can start as early as possible in the software development life cycle and that is the reason black box testing is also referred as specification based testing type so tester can start testing from the requirement so we can simply refer black box testing as specification based testing type it's a specification based testing type then in black box testing our main intention is provide input and validate output right check output that is the reason it is also referred as functional testing it is also referred as functional testing in black box testing based on the input output we can validate the software application so it is also called io driven testing okay we can simply define it as io driven testing and one more like uh, we can simply define black box testing is a process where we can you know simply validate a system application by variety of data and that is called data driven testing data driven is one of the popular framework in automation what is concept of data driven testing so guys basically test cases which is drive by data data driven is one of the popular framework in automation why because data driven testing is a process where testing okay any same application or i will say that okay same set of activity with some multiple data with multiple time okay in data driven testing what is the tester role where we can simply test the software application okay same set of activity that can be any kind of module functionality that can be any kind of process anything okay with some multiple data so provide a multiple data some set of data i will say right some set of data we need to apply onto the software application and we need to validate a software output this is called data driven testing example if you want to validate a login functionality consider in login what is the process we need to provide an input as a user name then we need to provide an input as a password and we need to validate okay whenever user enters some valid data at that time user is able to log in or not so in this what is data driven okay let's say if you want to validate a hundred different credentials now what is the case we have a hundred different credentials to be uh, to be uh, you know validate if you want to provide that hundred different data 
onto the software and we need to test that okay whether it is software working properly with that hundred different valid or invalid set of credentials in that case how you are going to validate yes it is important to focus that if the customer requirement is there the same process we need to validate with some same set of data data can be the combination of valid plus invalid data right so what is the process here we need to drive the same application we need to drive the same process with multiple set of data and this is nothing but data driven testing so how it is possible in manual testing in manual testing guys we can simply write one single test case to validate this uh, entire process of course the test case whatever the test case you are going to prepare the test case should be valid one right if the valid test case if the if this test case is result you as a pass that means if your software is stable then only we can simply write an automation script okay we can write an automation script to automate this scenario and in this automation we can use data driven framework just to validate all the remaining 99 test cases or 99 test data so data driven is nothing but which is drive by data okay the process which is drive by multiple set of data this is concept or this is a framework which is called data driven testing so in a simple line or i can say in a single line how you can define data driven testing it is a process where we can pass okay or we can test the same set of activity with multiple data multiple time this is called data driven testing so now in black box testing like if there is a question okay like when we can start so black box testing is a completely requirement based testing process right so immediately once we receive a requirement we can start black box testing and we can continue till the again release right at every level we can conduct black box testing now how we can start this right and what is the question let's say who can do black box testing who can do black box testing if this is a question guys then let me tell you in black box testing we just provide input and we validate the output or from that software application so we don't focus on internal mechanism internal mechanism that is all about the coding part so code we generally don't consider and don't uh, you know observe in black box testing and that is the reason tester with programming or testing knowledge plus tester without any programming knowledge can perform black box testing it's completely specification based testing type okay so to perform black box testing now we need to understand how many test case design techniques are there there are guys total six different techniques available first one is equivalence partitioning in letter size to cube syllabus you will be getting equivalence partitioning is a technique now we can uh, previously we can just observe okay what is ep ep is nothing but ecp equivalence class partitioning okay you can prefer any one either ep or ecp both are same second technique is boundary value analysis third technique is decision table fourth technique is state transition testing fifth one use case based testing technique and the last one error guessing which is again uh, this is again a experience based testing type okay error guessing so we will see every technique in detail but in this tutorial i am going to explain only ecp or ep what is the concept of equivalence class partitioning this point with some istqb examples i will explain so let's see what is equivalence partitioning yes equivalence class partitioning it is a process where we can divide okay input domain so what is the input domain like whatever the application you want to verify or validate in that whenever you pass a data to that particular field to that particular application then that is called input domain so input domain get divided into two part or two classes okay one class is valid class or that is also referred as valid partition and another one is invalid partition so for every class okay whenever we divide a input domain into two partition for every partition tester is responsible to write a test cases just to cover that requirement right so what is equivalence class partitioning divide the input domain or you divide the input data of software 
unit into the partition of data from which test cases can be derived and the most important thing is these test cases are designed to cover each partition at least once so that means a minimum set of test cases we need to concentrate whenever we are going to identify equivalence partitioning for that input domain so let's take a simple example suppose what is ECP? So we have just run, right? ECP is a process where we can divide input domain into the two classes. Consider there is a form and form contain one field. The field is for username. Okay, consider username can be accepted 4 to 10 character. This is your client requirement. So just to cover this requirement, first we need to concentrate minimum set of requirement. Why minimum set of requirement? I will say that minimum set of requirement we need to cover, I mean to say minimum set of test cases we need to identify just to cover maximum coverage, okay. Not a requirement we need to identify, based on the requirement we need to focus on test cases. So minimum test cases we need to identify just to perform maximum coverage and this is called you know test case design testing technique all this test case design technique will help you to identify minimum set of test cases to cover maximum coverage so example this is what we have a username and username will accept 4 to 10 character how you are going to solve this very first this is our input domain let's divide it into two partition first partition that is for valid class right this is a valid class so what is a valid here Yes, whatever the given requirement is uh, from that customer, that is what the valid data know. So here we can consider 4 to 10 character. This is what a valid, right? Any, any particular, uh, you know, data which is between this range, 4 to 10 character, this is called valid. Now, what is invalid here? Based on the requirement first, we need to concentrate on an invalid data. So invalid data set will be, yes, less than 4 character or we can say greater than 10 character. This is what the invalid. And the rest of the scenario we can write, let's say we can validate a spatial character, right? So if there is any spatial character, this should not accepted by that username. If there is any number user entered, this should not accept by that username. Uh, if you keep a username as a null or let's say blank, it should not accepted by that particular field. So there are n number of scenarios we can validate. But whenever there is a question that you need to identify equivalence partitioning or ECP at that time you need to concentrate on this formula that minimum number of test cases we need to identify just to verify and just to cover a maximum coverage okay from the given requirement and that is the reason guys I will say that okay whatever the partition you found for every partition tester is responsible to write test cases right so i will say that one test case is sufficient to cover this valid partition another one is cover is sufficient to cover this less than four character and one test case is sufficient to cover greater than 10 character so how many test cases you required how many test cases you need to write to cover maximum coverage i will say that total three test cases are sufficient to cover this requirement right total three test cases are sufficient to cover this customer requirement so in this way you need to identify or you need to understand like ecp concept so ecp it is a process where we can divide the input domain into two classes that is one valid class and another one is an invalid class and based on the client requirement for every partition we need to write at least one test case just to cover that requirement so this is all about equivalence class partitioning so basically all these test case design techniques will help you to identify minimum set of test cases just to cover maximum coverage in other like what we can define ECP or equivalence class partitioning is a process where we can divide input domain okay into the equivalence classes that is valid and invalid and minimum test cases tester need to prepare in the form of test data okay based on this data and we can simply you know achieve a maximum coverage of the given requirement this is called ecp now 
let's understand few IST cube question based on the same scenario so let's see in IST cube what happened they might give you something like this scenario and they will ask you okay what is the ECP here so let's understand first question every time you need to concentrate on a given question guys so you are testing let's say question is you are testing a machine that score exam papers and assign a grade based on the score achieve the grades are uh, you know are as follows so these are the grade list okay if you apply equivalence partitioning how many test cases will you need to achieve minimum test coverage so now very first whatever the test data is there we need to just you know uh, what I can say you need to partition that data in a valid and invalid form because ECP is a combination of two different classes valid plus invalid so here if you want to you know just make a partition how you are going to partition this data just a minute what is the data we have we have that data which contains okay let me just capture this example to show you how you are going to solve this so very first guys what we need to do we need to make a partition partition based on the given data let's say the values are starting with 1 to 49 right the one partition 1 to 49 and the answer will be f here the grade will be f 50 to 59 another partition grade is d then 60 to 69 there is another partition again grade d okay 70 to 79 and grade is c here we have 80 to 89 and yes grade is P. Now 90 to 100 and again we have a grade that is A. So once we talk about equivalence partitioning guys, you need to concentrate on a definition part. Whatever the given input domain is there, we will be partitioning this input domain into two classes, no? Valid plus invalid. I will say that whatever the data is given, these data are valid one right these are what valid one data so if you want to simply partition we need to consider two more classes now one is the range if the range is starting from 1 to 100 so i will say that less than 1 again greater than 100 this will consider invalid this is considered invalid partition so if you calculate here how many number of test cases we require answer is one test case for invalid another one is for this partition so one i will say another one 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 and one and the last one also so total one two three four five six seven eight eight test cases are sufficient to cover minimum test coverage okay minimum test cases we require to achieve the coverage so what what is the correct answer here b is the correct answer right so in this way guys you need to concentrate how to solve ecp uh, for a given istqb questions this will help you a lot next question let me show you next question if this is a question let me again capture this question just a minute let me capture this total istqb question number okay so what is asked here an employee bonus is to be calculated it cannot be negative but it can be calculated down to zero okay the bonus is based on the length of employee so less than or equal to two what is the given here requirement or data now there is no partition i mean to say partition is given in some kind of sentences now you need to make your partition right less than or equal to two years this is one of the partition more than two years but less than five years okay let's just uh, you know write a partition less than or equal to Two years so yes what is the given here it cannot be negative right so we can consider 0 to 2 yes that is what the valid partition for first uh, less than or equal to 0 then we have to consider more than 2 but less than 5 so more than 2 that means it should start with 3 and less than 5 right 3 to 5 this is another partition now 5 to 10 years so let's see 5 to 10 years so again we can consider from 5 to 10 that is a third and we have something more here or longer than 10 years can i consider greater than 10 this is in the form of what again all these four classes are valid classes no because these are the given now what is the invalid it cannot be negative can you see here 
this value cannot be negative so can i say any negative value should not be accepted so here what is the question what is the minimum number of test cases required to cover all valid equivalence partitioner partitions for calculating bonus now see we have a both partition now valid plus invalid so what is the answer now please focus on the given question only valid ask right that is the reason we can consider one one test case one test case and one test case total i will say four test cases are sufficient so correct option is here t in this way guys you can solve your istqb questions based on this equivalence class partitioning so this will help you a lot just to practice and in case of any query you can simply reach me on my youtube account and uh, i'm sharing my email id as well in case of any kind of query you can simply you know ask me those questions whatever you feel uh, something you know difficult or something difficulty if you are feeling you can simply ask me yes so in this way you can solve all the istqb questions right now this is all about this tutorial or this particular video so guys thank you so much stay tuned stay safe all the best